Uh, my name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a technical trainer for McNeil, and this is Getting Started in Rhino for Windows. And today I want to talk about um, building a, kind of a complex organic shape in, in Sub-D uh, in Rhino 7. And this is something that I've actually built before. I'm violating my rule for getting started of building stuff that I haven't built before, but it's been a while. And I use this as a test object. Um, I actually use this as an internal demo for McNeil to to show um, a lot of our internal folks how to use Sub-D and stuff like that. So uh, what I basically want to show is you have uh, obviously a, a highly organic object. And in this case, I'm actually using just um, a Make 2D um, setup from from the original model and then we're just going to build it from scratch and start over and i want to talk a little bit about like how do we approach something like this you know this this model um there's a raised rib that comes all the way around the outside let me get my pan out here um, there's a raised rib that comes all the way around the outside of this thing and then there's some more ribs that kind of chase in here and then there's another rib that kind of fades and there's another one that kind of fades. And then we've got some kind of shapes like this in between. Drawing with a mouse is always fun. And then we've got this section up here that kind of goes like that. And then we've got to fit a foot in here somehow and, and all that kind of stuff. And so all these forms blend together. And in NURBS, this would be very, very difficult to try and make. So what I want to what I want to look at is how do we begin to do this kind of stuff? And again, let's let me grab my pen here and let's see if my Wacom will actually draw. And it looks like it will. So, um, so what what I want to start with is basically we're going to do paper doll layout, which you've seen me do before. And if you haven't, check out paper doll layout, uh, the hand challenge on YouTube. Um, and we're going to create two basically symmetrical shapes at this point. And we're going to keep these very, very light at the beginning. There's, there's an inflection here and there's an inflection here. So basically we need one, two, three points in order to get this inflection. And we're going to steal this point, two, three, to get this inflection. So we're basically only going to have one, two, three faces. Okay, that's what we're going to use to start with, because we're going to start as simple as possible. Then we're going to uh, focus on kind of getting the rest of this stuff. And because we've got one, two, three faces here, I'm going to add another strip of faces here, and I'm going to break that up into one, two, three. And then we've got another rib in here that I'm also going to break up into one, two, three. And so we can do that a couple of different ways we can start with a single face here and a single face here and then bridge between them. Um, that's one way to do it. Um, we can start with a curve and then actually lay out our curves. And then we can do a sub D loft and get a lot of this stuff for free. Um, I guess we'll, I guess we'll dig into it and see, you know, kind of what, what technique tends to be most effective. So the way that I've got this set up is I've just got I've just got CAD art on this layer, um, and I and I have a front a top view and a side view, and I've got the top view out of the modeling window and the side view out of the modeling window, just so that if we model in this space right here, the the image isn't bisecting the drawing. And if we go to front view, we can see it. If we go to top view, we can see it. And if we go to perspective view, we can see the model with the reference images outside the modeling plane. That's typically how I set stuff up. Usually I do this with a pencil sketch, but in this case, I was I was feeling extraordinarily lazy, I mean, efficient, and, and just grabbed some line work from the original model, which I thought I had a sketch for, but I lost it. So here we are. So let's jump into this a little bit and take a look. First of all, um, I put the art on a layer. I took that layer and I changed the color um, to something light so that we can work over it without it being in the way. And the first thing I did was I, I 
took this art and I dropped it on a layer and I changed the color and it didn't change colors. And I thought, what in the world is going on here? I've been doing Rhino for 30 years and I can't figure out why it is. And that's because the display color was set to black, which overrides whatever color is set in your layer. It doesn't matter what's set here if the object property is set to something different. So in this case, I just changed it to by layer and then it inherits the color from the layer itself. So uh, a common mistake I see on tech support a lot and and so that's a that's the the fix for that. I'm going to lock this art so that it's it's just stuck in space. And then let's go to the top view and start laying out some curves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab a control point curve and I'm going to change this to subd friendly up here, which means that we're going to get subd curves. If we if we draw a curve and I extrude it, if it's subd friendly, this is going to be a subd. If I make a curve and it's not subd friendly and I extrude it, I get a surface. Okay, so that's an important thing to know if you're going to use curves to lay out subds this is how you want to do it. And in this case, I've got one, two, three, four points, which yields three surfaces, which is which is exactly what we want. So let's go back. Let's make this sub D friendly. And we're just going to draw one, two, three, four points. And I'm just going to mirror this because it gets me where I need to be. And then I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in the center and I'm going to scale it to zero, which is going to flatten it out. And then I'm just going to drop it roughly at the center line. We're going to be pushing and pulling this thing around a little bit, so I don't need to go crazy with that. Um, but then I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it up here and then I'm going to mirror that. And this gives me a basic layout of, of what I need to do. And because I mirrored this with history, if I grab this point and move it, it's gonna update the other one. So I can actually model symmetrically here, which is kind of nice. And I get the updates for free, which is a nice little efficiency boost, right? So I've got kind of my basics of how this thing is gonna go together and then what I want to start doing is we're going to go into 3D and let's just grab all of this stuff. Actually, let's start with these guys on the outside and let's loft all this together. I'm changing my mind as I'm doing this. Let's loft all these. So we're going to go up here to the sub D menu and we are going to loft these. And you can see what happens is I get, I get my shape segments thrown in there. Now my corners are rounding off. I can just add the corners back in and that's fine. And then I'm not going to make this a closed shape. I'm not going to adjust anything. I'm just going to let it roll. And what this is going to do is this is going to give me my basic breakout of what we're how we're going to make this thing. Now we don't have enough edges to quite do exactly what we want to do, but we have enough that we can kind of get started. And so eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this sub D edge. Let me hide the curves. I have a hotkey for hiding curves. Um, and then um, we're gonna insert some edges and we're gonna do this both sides. And you can see that we can start to, we can start to add the one, two, threes, right? If I'm gonna pull this surface up, I need one, two, three edges right so I need that I need to start doing my one two threes later and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say I, I need my one two threes there's a video um, on our YouTube that is called and I'll put it in the chat rule of three and this is what I'm talking about I won't make you watch the ad here but let me put this in the chat that is the rule of three video. And if you are 
confused as to what I mean when I say your one, two, threes, that will explain it. All right, so let's, let's go down the path a little bit here and start adding some stuff to this. And I'm gonna switch to box mode, which isn't gonna change things much, but it, it is my preferred method of laying stuff out. And I'm gonna start over here and let's, let's go to wireframe and I'm gonna shift control drag to get this point. And I'm gonna just make that a little thicker. I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to make this a little thicker. And I'm going to get this a little closer to our art. And then I'm going to grab Shift Control click this edge and Shift Control click this edge. And I'm going to just drag the extrude dot to bring some faces out. And I'm going to just go maybe one, maybe two, maybe three. We can always get rid of it later. And then I'm going to grab these edges. I'm going to scale them together. This allows us to work across the center line and I'm going to pull this over something like this and I'm going to pull this over something like this. Now I have to decide how I'm going to run around this corner. Am I going to go just like this or am I going to actually make this an edge loop? And I think I want to make this an edge loop. So I'm going to actually start rotating these edges. And I'm going to get them to start coming around the corner. Do the same thing here. And then what I can do is I can bridge between these guys. And I'm going to add one more segment just so I've got a third segment in the middle here. And that gives me the basis for my entire bin, right? So now I have to start looking and say, okay, is this too much? Is this not enough? You know, maybe I don't need this edge. Uh, maybe I do. I can always take it out later if I need it. But then I can start looking and start analyzing my shape a little bit if I go to wireframe and say, okay, this really kind of needs to come up like that. This kind of really needs to come up like that. And then, but this shape kind of needs to not be there, kind of needs to be more over here. So that means I probably need to start adding some additional edges. So let's do that. So I'm gonna grab this edge and I'm gonna just pull this over and I'm not gonna do this on both sides. I'm gonna pull this over to here and I'm gonna double click it, shift control, double click it, and I'm gonna scale it to flatten it out just a little bit. Now I can add this and I still have kind of what I need over here. And so now I can start seeing I can come, I can kind of come down to this and back up to the center line. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Just gonna add an edge, not a crease, edge, there we go. I'm gonna pull this kind of in here. I'm gonna pull this up. And I'm shift control dragging to get these points, by the way. That is the sub object selection on that. And we're gonna start just kind of getting what we need. Now, keep in mind, this is dead flat. We're not doing anything other than making a completely flat template at this point. We're not gonna even begin to start adding thickness to this for a little bit. We're just getting our topology and our flow. So I definitely wanna have an up down here, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this edge and I am gonna add edges on both sides and I'm gonna pull that out something like that. So that allows me to go, you know, start going up and start going back down. And then this, I probably need to do the same thing. Add some shapes there, add some shapes there. And then we'll figure out what to do with this, whether we need to add an entire ring around this thing. You know, do we need to add another one in here? or not, we'll figure that out in a little bit. So this gives us our basic layout, right? This gives us pretty much everything we need to start modifying. So then let's go into the perspective view and I'm gonna shift control drag this entire row and I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. And then I can kind of see where the next row is. So I'm gonna start pulling that up 
and then I'm going to start pulling this up like that. And then all of these guys, I'm going to pull up like that. And then maybe these guys, maybe just this end. Eh. Something like that. We'll, we'll get it to be prettier as we go. But we've got the basic shape of the fin that we're kind of we're originally looking for, right? This this nice kind of bent shape. So now I can double click this edge, and I can double click this edge, Shift Control double click by the way, and I can just pull this up. All right, we're just gonna start adding a little shape to this. I'm gonna pull this up, and you can see that we have started to add some topology to this thing. And if I switch to box mode, you can see that it's very nice and very organic and very kind of lovely. And if I want these to fade out, we'll go back to box mode, I can just put these right back where I, where I found them. You know, I can just snap those back to the original location. And if you don't know how I'm doing that snap with gumball, Gumball has two settings, snappy dragging and smooth dragging. And I always run snappy dragging. I also always run my O snaps disabled. And if I hit the Alt key, the O snap uh, enables temporarily. So if I grab something with Gumball, I can start dragging it. I can hold down Alt. And then the Gumball is going to find the closest things to snap to. So I can snap. To basically anything I want. I could snap it flat, I could snap it higher, I can snap it back to over here. And so that allows me to be able to, in 3D space, be able to do things like this little fade snap that I did down here, where if we switch, you can see that now that fades out rather nicely. Right? And we can always grab these edges and we can just start playing with them now. We can say, well, how, how you know how much ribbing do we need there do we need this much do we need this much does it go under you know what do we do because it's set up right we've got the one two three this is one two three that allows us to go up and down that just controls that whole little shape right there right and then this two three controls this shape here so these points affect this cup these three points affect this ridge these three points affect the shape on the other side. Okay, so you just have to keep that in mind. Your pairs of three. One, two, three. Watch that, watch that rule of three video. That's like you'll get sick of hearing me say it. All right, so this gives us our basic kind of layout here, right? And so now we need to decide like how are we going to add the shape to this? And maybe what we'll do is go to the top view maybe what we'll do is we'll add the foot pocket i'm going to switch back to wireframe and we'll get this shape kind of sorted out first i'm just going to pull these guys like that and then maybe what we need to do is maybe this entire thing needs to come up like that so that you could get a foot in there. Let's see how that looks. That's kind of foot shaped. Maybe we'll grab this and that, and we can decide whether or not that comes up like that. Maybe these come up here. Just the point. I'm going to snap it to this point here. That way those all kind of work together. I can always grab this entire edge from here to here, shift control, click, click, and then double click in the middle to get all of them. And then I can scale to decide whether I want that to flatten out or whether I want it to cup more. That's a really nice trick. So maybe I'll flatten that out just a little bit. And then maybe what I'll do is grab these guys and then check this out i'm going to relocate my gumball up here and then i can scale to 
this point. Let me grab that point as well. Relocate gumball to here. And then you can see that I can scale those up or down to that point. It's very kind of manta ray, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> manta ray esque, which is kind of swim fan appropriate. So let's kind of do something like that. And then maybe what we want to do is maybe we should pull these guys just a little higher to make room for toes like that. And that kind of gives us a nice little foot pocket in there, right? And, and then we can always adjust, like if we need more ribbing, we can just grab these points right here and pull those up a little bit and decide, you know, how does that feel inside view? Does that, does that do what we want it to do? And all that kind of stuff. Now, <clears throat> it looks like I've got some creases going on back here. So I'm actually gonna get rid of, I'm gonna drag select all of this stuff back here and I'm just gonna get rid of the creases. And you can see that, that that faceting goes away in smooth mode and box mode is still there because it's supposed to be, but in smooth mode, it gets, it gets rid of it. So anytime you see a, a, a darker line in your model, see how this line is darker than this line? That means it's creased. So we're just gonna grab that and just uncrease it, get rid of it. And this gives us kind of what we need in order to kind of keep going around this model. Now, we've got some choices to make as far as thickness. We can start, like say for instance, grab the edge of this thing. Um, actually, let's just grab this part and we can start extruding down, right? We can add some thickness to it like that. This is gonna be creased by default. And I think I'm gonna leave it creased for now because if I uncrease it, you'll see what happens. It gets soft right there and that's kind of not what I want. I kind of want this to be, you know, have a little have a little corner to it. So I'm gonna leave that there for now. I can always get rid of it later. And I think what I will most likely do is I will grab this and I'll throw a bevel on it like this. And then I will get rid of all of the creases, which will make it nice and soft. But still give me that shape. But for now, I'm going to leave it creased just because it's easier to manage. And I don't have to add a whole bunch of extra geometry to try and figure out what to deal with or how to manage it. So my strap looks like needs to come down a little bit farther. So I'm going to just start adjusting that to match my art a little more closely. And I'm gonna start pulling these guys up. I'm gonna do this in box mode. So it makes it a little bit easier to manage and a little bit easier to read. The longer you do sub D stuff, the more box mode will be your spirit animal. Um, because what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to very quickly look at a box mode model and see if something's jacked up. Like if you, if I grab a box mode model, right? And I do this. In box mode, you can very clearly see that that is a mess. And I go to shaded view, you can see what I'm talking about, right? That is a, that is a mess and we need to fix that. However, in smooth mode, it's just a delightful little inflection right <laughs> and and so when you're evaluating this stuff in smooth mode it's really easy to go eh, i want this more eh, i want that more i want that more and then you're like wait a minute i can't quite figure out what where this is coming from or how to fix that or what the deal is whereas if you go to box mode ah! <laughs> it's very easy holy oh my god so then you start saying, okay, well, I obviously have to untie this stuff, right? I can't leave it. I can't leave it like that. And so it's very easy to say, oh, okay, now that has been restored to some sort of order, which will then smooth mode very nicely, right? So even though it looks fine in smooth mode and you go, okay, well, maybe that's what I wanted that's not the way you do it. 
you know, if that's what you want, then we need to add a few more edges because what we don't want to do is cross. It's like Ghostbusters, right? Don't cross the streams. Never cross the streams. <laughs> don't cross the verts. <laughs> so, so we want to untie this and just put it back to some semblance of not terrible, right? We want to de-terrible our model. And that's box mode is the most effective way to do that. All right, so that's kind of that's kind of what I look for there. And then let's grab this edge and this and double click to get that. And let's just extrude this out. But before we do anything, I'm gonna set my gumball over here. And then I'm gonna scale this to zero, which is gonna make it gonna make it flat. At least it should make it flat. Come here. Click, click, double click. Gumball relocate, and I'm going to stick it. Oh, I snapped it down there. That's why I went there. All right. You want to snap it to the right place. There we go. Flatten it out, and then I'm going to shift, drag, select these two points. See, I have two sub verts up here, and I'm going to stitch. And that is going to connect those, because right now these are not connected. If I pull them apart, you can see it's got a gap. Shift, drag, stitch. Now it's connected, which is what I want. So we've effectively turned the corner here everywhere except for the interior. And then the interior is a little bit more complicated case because we actually have to build the foot pocket in here. So now we need to decide like kind of how the bottom works here. And, and it may have made sense for me not to extrude this just yet. In fact, let's back up and undo that. Maybe it makes sense to build the bottom first. And so what we can do is let's grab from here, let's grab from here to here, and let's grab from here to here, and let's bridge this first. And I'm gonna just do this in, let's see, how many edges do we need? We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think twelve. So let's do that. I'm just rolling my mouse to get that. And the reason that we're doing that is I need to be able to match up point, 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 here, 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 here. Otherwise, I can't bridge. So if I grab from here to here, that should be 10 edges. That is 10 edges, which means I can, if I do it right, that's 10, that's 10. If I bridge, the bridge works. And I'm gonna roll this down just to one because I just want that connection. So now I can connect all of that together and then I can just simply edit this as needed and it will behave itself as expected. Because that's what we want. We don't want sub D going crazy on us. We want it to just behave itself and kind of do things that are predictable and that make sense. And if we keep it organized, we follow rule of three, we keep it simple, we remove data first before we add data later and we try and simplify and add lightness to quote the great Colin Chapman of Lotus Cars um, we want this to stay as simple and organized as possible so that when we go to switch to sub D or to, to smooth mode we get this beautiful organic flowing wonderful shape right now, do we need to carry these edges all the way through? No, we can start pulling stuff out, right? Because you just heard me say, let's remove as much stuff as possible. So let me practice what I preach here. And let's get rid of some of this excess stuff. And with sub D, I'm always going through this kind of push-pull, do I keep it, do I leave it, do I get rid of it? kind of thing where I keep pulling stuff out until the model falls apart. Once the model falls apart, 
then I'll put something back in. And in this case, I am really digging kind of this little roll that's happening right there. So I'm going to just keep going until it becomes something that I don't want, which in this case, it's actually looking pretty great. Now, I do need this detail up here in order to be able to capture this, you know, these shapes, but do I need all of it? Let's find out. Let's pull some stuff out and see what happens. Now, I would say that that is not great. I don't want that one to go away. Can I get rid of this one? Eh, I don't like that. So let's put that back. And it actually looks like I'm starting to get some, some artifact that I don't really like. So I'm actually going to put a few more back. I don't mind this. Let me hide this layer. I don't mind, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a little discontinuity kind of right in here. See that, see that, and that. I don't mind that, I'm okay with that. But what I don't want it to do is turn into that weird bear paw that it was doing where it had all that stuff kind of scribbled in there. So I think this is about as far as I can simplify. Now, can I do this? Maybe. Yeah, that probably works. You can see that those like ribbing discontinuities are kind of right in here, but I'm kind of okay with that. But this gives us a much simpler profile up here to try and deal with. Now, what's the downside of what we just did? The downside is we now have just four edges up here. We have eight edges up here. So, we got to figure out how to manage that at some point because at some point these have to meet. Now there's a way, a couple of ways that we can deal with that. And, and I think what we'll do is we're, we're going to go down the road a little bit first before we try and try and deal with that. But let's grab this. We need to turn this corner somehow, right? We've turned this corner up here. We need to turn this corner down here. So if I double click, I'm going to start scaling. I'm going to hold down shift and then I'm going to also hold down control. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to ex scale extrude a second set of edges off of here, which means I can crease these and you can see exactly where we turned the corner. That's kind of what we want because we want to be able to deal with this edge, this edge, and this edge and know you know, kind of what we're going to do with it. Like maybe this crease follows through here and fades out. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll find the way along the way. So I'm going to leave this open back here. So what I want to do is I want to enclose this and turn this into a strap. So I'm going to grab here and here, double click, here and here, double click. And because this is all super organized, we can very simply bridge this and it bridges together very, very nicely. And I might add a second segment in here just to have a little bit. We can always take it out later. And if I left the crease in, you could see that it would crease the edge. Maybe that makes sense just to keep it, keep it clear as to what's going on here. And so now the last thing that we need to figure out is how this foot pocket is going to work. And I think what we'll do is we'll grab this entire thing, and we're going to do exactly what we did before, which is to start dragging a scale handle, hold down shift, hold down control, and we're going to extrude out a little edge. And then we can grab this edge, and then we can just simply extrude it, right? Now, if I was doing this for real, I would very likely be working off of a foot last. I would very likely be working off of a fit model. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff, but we're not, it's a demo and we're just kind of screwing around. Maybe this is just the first pass for an aesthetic. I don't know, whatever. Maybe you're doing a webinar and you're trying to teach people how to do sub D. That's valid. You can do that. <laughs> the fact remains that if I was going to do this for real, I would probably have started with a foot last and then built around that. 
I don't have that luxury at this point. So that's what we're that's what we're dealing with. So for all of you wannabe Jacques Cousteau's out there who are standing on your chair yelling at your keyboard saying, this is not an accurate model of a swim fin and it's never gonna okay. Maybe decaf for you. We're all friends here. So now we need to figure out how to close the end of this up. Now, is this long enough for a foot? No. Does it fit a foot? No. Do we just we start with a foot last? No, we just covered that. How long have we been out? Um, but what we want to do is figure out how to close up the end of this. And we have some, some challenges because we have a disparate number of points in this pocket. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag select this. And just to make it simple, I'm going to scale everything to zero, which is going to flatten it out. All right. Now, what I can do, I can simply collapse this to a singularity and call it a day. You know, if you're if you're lying, cheating, and stealing, we can scale to zero. We can scale to zero. And you know, we can we can take all of this stuff. And if I come up here and I switch this to points, I can go stitch and we can just go poof, right. That is the nuclear option. We can just take all that stuff and jam it into a singularity. It's ugly, but it works. And if we drag this out. We've got a nice pocket if we turn it to shaded mode to see how badly we have murdered this. We can take this and tuck it back where it's supposed to be, make sure it doesn't jam out the bottom, right? This is an awful kind of balloon knot mess of a mess, right? But it works. And if it works, I am not going to tell you it's wrong. Other people might tell you it's wrong, but other people aren't building your model. So you need to decide what's right for you. I'm just removing some creases here. If I was just making this to throw it through a printer, I would do the balloon knot of death in here. I would send it to the printer and I would give it a shot and see what it looks like because chances are this is not what I'm focusing on. Chances are. I'm focusing more on the shape of this thing and the fact that that crease looks terrible. So we need to get rid of it. And we need to soften this whole thing up and make it look nicer. And the overall shape of the, of the thing in the thing at the place with the person. And then we start saying, okay, well, this is now kind of what I want, right? And for a first pass, this is probably going to get us there, you know? Do we have too much stuff? Possibly. So let's take a few stuff out and see if the model breaks. If it breaks, we just undo it. Right? So that's probably enough. I can probably get away with just having these guys. The less stuff you have, the less stuff you have to manage. I'm going to leave that out there as a little piece of life advice that extends far beyond modeling. Maybe we take this and we change the shape of this because we think it's going to bite into our foot and we hate that. Maybe we have sensitive feet and we don't like talking about it in public, but we're going to do everything we can as a modeler to make sure people don't suffer. Because we know how it feels. Maybe we're just a wisecracking demo guy who spends far too much time in the basement talking to himself. <laughs> it's all good. We're just modeling. All right, so this gives us kind of what we need, right? And if we if we throw this into like something like rendered mode, we can take a look and say, okay, that is something that we can start to play with. And if I throw a material on it, I can start to say, ooh, I kind of like those highlights. I kind of like the side view. Maybe we do a little bit of adjustment 
on the side view and I'm gonna leave it in rendered mode because it's fun to look at. And I'm gonna turn on the sub D wires so I can see. And I really like this curve in here, but something funky is happening right here. So let's see if we can figure out what, where, why and fix that. So let's grab maybe this stuff. And let's just add a little bit of zoom to it. And maybe we want this to be a little spicier with the curve. And it's probably the completely wrong thing to do. Like for swim fins, it probably needs to be something more like that. But it's just so pretty when it goes whoosh like that. So <laughs> we'll we'll dare to dream at the concept phase. And then when the engineering folks come back and say, why did you do it this way, you idiot? Then we'll change it and make it ugly. But for now, we get to dream. Maybe the shape comes up like that. It's a little bit more complimentary. And we get this kind of cool, fun little thing. And, and the cool thing about this is, is editing this is really pretty easy. And, and if we ever need to, if they come back to us and they say, okay, great, let's, let's do something with this. And this, all this mess in here becomes a problem. We just simply do this. We extract that, that surface in there and we just get rid of it, right? And then we can build a new pocket, make it nice or whatever, or fit it to a last or do whatever, 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 right? But for the time being, I'm gonna leave this in here and we're gonna just go, Ooh, we're not gonna look at that. <laughs> is that the right modeling answer? No, is it the right modeling answer for right now? Yes. So that's how we're gonna roll. All right, so how do we take this one step further and start doing some refinement to it. What if we wanted to start adding some details or some color or you know some color breaks or something like that? I'm going to just change the shape because it's bugging me um, a little bit. We can start to, first of all, we're going to keep this because if Jerry from marketing comes by and says, uh, the swim fin is needs to be two uh, percent bigger in every direction, and we have to edit it. We're going to need it, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy to layer. I'm going to hide this layer, and I'm going to rename this sub D keep. And then I know I've got a copy here. If I hide this and I bring this back, ta-da! There it is, right? So we're going to mess with this, and we're going to take this, and we're going to run a command called two nerves. And what two nerves does is, and I am going to actually delete the input objects because we have a copy, and I'm going to let that run, and voila, this is now a closed poly surface. Now this is very important. If your sub D was closed to start with, your poly surface will be closed as a result. The cool thing about that is you can take this and mesh it just like you would anything else and throw it through a printer and you would be good to go. This would be a printable part all day long. The second cool thing about this is now that it's a NURBS object, we can just do NURBS stuff to it. So let's say we wanted to we can we wanted to start doing some color breaks on this i'm going to go to curves i'm not going to make these sub d friendly and i'm just going to start drawing some color breaks on this thing and let's say that and then i'm going to mirror this so i want it to be something like that and then let's say we're going to do something like this And I'll mirror this. And then we'll take these, take this object, and we're going to split it. I'm going to use those curves. And we're going to just split it up. Now I can take this and I can apply a different material to it. 
and I can start to say, okay, now I can start looking at my colorways and my graphics, and I can say, ooh, I actually kind of like how that looks. And maybe we go to the side view and we do the same thing. Maybe we accentuate this lovely zooming sidewall we've got here. And we Go to wireframe so we can find where the end of that curve was. And we lost our curve. And we'll project these on. And maybe we'll drop that just a little bit. Something like that feels about cool. And then we'll split just like we did before. Grab this. And we've got, in very short order, a colorway that we can then start doing some, throw it into ray trace mode and start taking a look at this thing and seeing how the highlights track and how the materials feel and does it need a bump? Does it not need a bump? You know, do we come down here and take a look at this and say, okay, it's got a bump on it, but maybe it's not reflective enough so that we can't see it. So maybe we turn this up a little bit and then maybe we make the scale of this smaller you know, we can actually start doing, you know, design, <laughs> which is what we're supposed to be doing in the first place, right? <laughs> so, so this is a very effective way to kind of get to a, what are we going to make and how are we going to do it, right? And then we can also, you know, continue to add details to this. Like, let's say that we wanted to add some venting to this piece and this piece. So let's just hide everything else using isolate. And these ISO curves are in the way. I don't really want to look at those. So I'm going to go to my properties. And I'm going to shut off the surface ISO curve so I can kind of see what's going on. All right. So let's add some details in here. And let's just, let's just do some kind of family of shape thing like that. And then let's do a bigger one down here. Maybe not that far. Let's kind of just fit it into the highlight. And then maybe we even do something nutty like between these. And we just throw one in there. And then we'll grab this. And let's just trim a hole. Let's just hack it right out. Let's go all the way through. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. This is what we're trying to find out. Um, and then let's add a little thickness to this. Shift, control, click the edge. I'm just going to extrude a little bit of thickness out of this. All right. I'm not even going to worry about the bottom because at this point, eh, maybe I will worry about the bottom. I say that. I say I'm not going to care about something, and then I'm like, I just can't do it. <laughs> so there's nothing like having a career of 30 years where people have been drilling the details matter into your head every single day of your life, and then you say, oh, I'm not going to care about it, and you have this blue screen, blue screen glitch in your brain that says, it's, you can't, you can't do that. All right, so let's blend the surface or blend these edges. I'm going to blend all of these. And I'm going to make this much smaller. Um, I am going to preview this and say go, and it's going to fail because those are way too big. And then we're going to say set all. And then we're going to do something smaller. I could always, you know, I could set this correctly to start with. I never do. And I always have to do this. So that's why I like the preview. And then we can see, okay, this is all working. This all does what it needs to do and all that kind of stuff. And then we say, okay. And so when we bring it back 
and then we switch back into don't look at the finish piece we look at this like this we're already in a position now where we could even then do additional colorway stuff where we say this you know this entire little little detail in here if we go let's grab this let's go to the wireframe shift control drag these guys and now we're gonna unclick this stuff actually i think these are just edges so it doesn't really matter yeah and then we're going to do a sub object assignment and we'll just assign this to black bring this back to rendered mode and you can see that we have these additional little details in here. So we can start playing with that kind of stuff and, and get, you know, different variations and different versions of this, depending on whether we copied it or cut it up or whatever. And very quickly, like, you know, we're, we're at under an hour with, with me blabbering and it's you know we're already at, at a position where we can start if we took this guy we could start iterating and say okay well that side looks like that that this side looks like this maybe we do a different treatment over here because now this is just a nerves model this is just this is just exactly like any other nerves model that you would work on but in the end of the day if we did have to go back and edit the basic shape or make a second iteration of this maybe they do come back and they say okay this this is really swoopy and fun, but it's completely impractical and this needs to cup the other direction. You go back to the sub D, you make the cup, you keep your curves, you throw your new details on, you add your colorways, you know, how long did that take? It didn't take very long. And we go from there. Or you just take the thing and you throw it into a paint program and you, you know, take it into Substance Painter or something like that. And you do all your colorways and stuff there, which are non-destructive. So that's another way to do it. So the cool thing about this is this is all split up right now. And if I were to join this, all my colorways are going to disappear, which is a bummer. But because they're all split up, I can go back and do sub-object selection and do sub-object material assignment, and we can get them back. And the cool thing about that is, is if we were to split this up first and then do our, our color assignments by sub-object selection later, then we don't have two models. You know, it used to be that you had to have two models, one for your colorways and one that was solid that you could send to a printer. Um, now it can be one model. You can you can have all this stuff hooked up and then and then go from there. So um, so I think that's about all I have to show you today. So I'll let you go. Awesome. Alrighty. Well, this is uh, getting started Rhino for Windows. I'm Kyle Houchins, Techno Trainer for McNeil. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.